Hi, I'm John McMillan. I'm the science director for the Wild Steelhead Initiative with Trout Unlimited. And we're out here on the river today and our goal is to hopefully catch a wild winter steelhead and then kind of go through the different types of tactics we would use to land that steelhead and then kind of overview the different fish handling practices that we're going to try and implement to ensure that we maximize survival of those fish that we release back into the river today. There it is. When that steelhead pulls on your line and it's swinging across, you want to set that hook as hard as you can to the inside bank. That is to the side of the bank that you waded out to the river from. Often the fish takes off and swims downstream of you. So one of the things that I think is really important is for you to follow that fish downstream and do your very best to get alongside the fish. That's important. It makes the fish so it's not only fighting the current and the tension of the rod, but it's also pulling all the weight of that big belly of fly line that's downstream from the fish. You wanna keep that rod really low and parallel to the bank. Do your best not to lift the rod high and try not to switch the direction of your rod back and forth because all of those things are factors that can loosen the hook or dislodge the hook from the fish's mouth. One of the things that I think is important is really trying to create as much tension and torque as you can to land that fish as quickly as possible. And one of the things I do to accomplish that is stick one of my hands and grab that rod at the very butt of the cork and then have another hand up at the very top by where the rod is actually coming out of the cork handle. And by spreading your hands as far apart as you can get them, you're maximizing the torque and tension and leverage that you can get out of that rod when you're trying to fight the fish. Landing the fish to me is probably the most challenging aspect of the whole thing. Not only do anglers get excited because the fish is there, but also because the fish itself does not want to be in the shallower waters. Slide them in. Nice big hen. And you let them, don't give tension till they turn on their side. And then you got her. Nice big girl. That's a nice fish. Ideally, I think in most cases, you are fishing with another partner and that person can go out with a net and land the fish before it gets into the shallow water. That keeps the fish's body weight in the water, doesn't expose it to air, and minimizes the thrashing. We're cradling her here. Notice how we're keeping her whole body weight in the water, and you can see that she's starting to tense. That means she's really ready to go. We're not squeezing on the tail very hard. Notice there's a loose grip, and then we're just gonna let her go. So one reason we had the fish in the water is that the organs in the fish are really sensitive and so bringing the weight of their body out into something like air which is what they're not accustomed to and their body's not evolutionarily prepared to deal with for extended periods that's not good for the fish so you don't want to squeeze those organs you don't want to grab onto the tail too hard generally just try and be as gentle as possible and if the fish wants to go let it go there are a number of scientific studies that have examined the effects of catch and release on steelhead. And nearly all those studies have measured what we call direct mortality, which is the number of steelhead or the ratio that died after they were caught and released. And fortunately, most of those studies have shown very low levels of mortality. The studies that I've reviewed highlight several important results that have direct implications for both mortality and sublethal effects of wild steelhead catch and release. And some of those, such as where the fish is hooked in the mouth, we don't have any control over. But there are other factors that we do have control over that have implications in determine whether that fish lives or dies. And those are things such as whether we expose the fish to air and how long we fight the fish. I would like to review what I think are the three most important factors that we need to think about when we're playing fish and handling fish to ensure that that fish swims away as healthy as it was before we caught it. First, use the appropriate strength line and gear because you wanna land the fish as quickly as possible. 
particularly when water temperatures are warm. That is because the science indicates that the risk of mortality and the sublethal effects tend to increase the longer a fish is fought because longer fights lead to greater exhaustion and higher levels of stress hormones. The second is keep the fish wet. Don't do things like drag the fish up on the bank or expose it to air for really long periods of time. The prolonged air exposure can result in death, but recently we've learned that even short periods of air exposure, those for say only 10 to 20 seconds, can also have a negative influence on the fish's breeding success later in life. Third, this can be difficult at times, but I always suggest, and I think we at TU believe that you gotta try and keep handling to a minimum and use a knotless net if possible, because that net will minimize the loss of the protective slime on the fish, which is an important barrier to disease later in life, particularly during the breeding period. I think it's important to remember to be gentle with the fish and remember not to squeeze the stomach or grab the wrist too hard when holding the fish and always make sure and keep your hands and fingers from going under the gill plate so you don't touch or abrade the gills. They're a very sensitive organ and they're easily damaged. The fish handling is important for a couple of reasons. The first is that there's been this increased interest in steelhead angling, and that's resulted in more anglers fishing for steelhead than I've seen. And second, a relatively small part of the population usually produces what we would consider to be the vast majority of the offspring. That means some animals, some fish, are more important to the population than others. And that means handling fish equally well is critical because you never know if that one fish that you caught and released on that one day, and maybe it's the only fish you caught in an entire year, but it could be one of those fish that contributes a disproportionate number of adults to the next generation of steelhead. So for anglers, it's really up to us to do our part even if it's only a small part on the river every time we go fishing to ensure that that fish we catch and release swims away as healthy as possible because that type of behavior is gonna ensure that the next generation of kids have the same opportunities that we had.